Hello and welcome to Grotto Beast's community. GBC is the result of months of work from the Germa community. Thanks to our designers, artists, and playtesters, we are proud to present GBC as both a fun fan project and a real competitive card game. In this video, I'll walk through everything you need to know to get brawling in the grotto, from the basics of a grotto beast to how to get your own deck together. So, let's go! In Grotto Beasts, you and another player duel for control of the grotto and the magical crystals contained within it. To win a game of Grotto Beasts, you're going to want to collect a number of crystals. For your first game, you can play to 10 crystals just to get a hang of the game. Once you're comfortable with that, you can play to 20 crystals for a more competitive game. You're mainly going to earn crystals by fighting and destroying your opponent's Grotto Beasts. This here is the board for Grotto Beasts, and it's split into four zones, that's the rows here, and each zone has four spaces. Uh, so first, each player has their own hideout, where you can prepare in relative safety. You're also going to have your own side of a central space called the Grotto, and that's where you're going to be fighting your opponent. You're going to play beasts into your hideout spaces, and then you're going to move them into the Grotto to fight for crystals. You'll be able to move your beasts left, right, up, and down uh, to outmaneuver your opponent and to get in position for an attack, though you will never ever be able to move into your opponent's side of the board. Before we move on, let's talk about the stars of the show. Grotto Beasts. Magical, powerful, and a little bit silly, they are your number one allies in your fight. Each Grotto Beast has a couple stats. In the top left of each beast, you will find its star rank, which starts at 1 and can go up to 3. Beasts with more stars are stronger. Each beast also has three more stats on the center of the card, health, attack, and defense. Health is how much damage the beast can take before it's destroyed, attack is used to attack enemy beasts, and defense will absorb damage from your opponent's attacks. Each Grotto Beast's attack and defense are one of two types, red physical or purple magical. When blocking an enemy beast's attack, defense is only able to block its own type. Magical defense will block magical attack, and physical defense will block physical attack. So let me show you an example. If this Chroma Nova here, with 3 magical attack, were to attack this Puddle Puppy, it would do 3 minus 1 damage, so 2 damage. However, if Chroma Nova, with 3 magical attack, were to attack Highlier with 3 physical defense, the physical defense would be no use against magic, and so Highlier would take all 3 damage. Another important fact is that damage can't be reduced below 1 by defense. If this Bobbin with 2 physical attack were to attack Sludge with 4 physical defense, 2 minus 4 would come out to negative 2, so we just do 1 damage to Sludge. One last thing to know is that each Grotto Beast can be exhausted, turned sideways, or unexhausted, turned vertical. Beasts get exhausted by doing one of many different actions, and they can't really do that much while they're exhausted. At the end of your turn, you'll get to unexhaust all of your Grotto Beasts, getting them ready for the next turn. Most beasts also have text on them that'll give them one of many exciting powers, but we'll talk about those later. For now, let's sit down and play. To start a game of Grotto Beasts, both players will draw six cards. In Grotto Beasts, you actually have two decks, and you can draw cards from either. I'll get into what this special deck does later. You then get one mulligan after you draw your cards, where you can opt to return any number of cards from your hand to your decks, shuffle, and then redraw until you're holding six cards again. Then, you can roll a die to decide who goes first, and the game can begin. On your turn in Grotto Beasts, you're going to get to take two actions, make all of the moves you want, and play as many special cards as you like. Note that, for the first player's first turn, they're only going to get one action since they get to go first. Before I jump into actions, which are really the bread and butter of the game, I'm going to quickly talk about moves, which you can do as many of as you want. Moves help you reposition your beasts. To move a beast, just pick an unexhausted beast, exhaust it, then you can move it up, down, left, or right. You can't move one beast onto another, and you're also not allowed to move into your opponent's side of the board. Okay, now we can talk about actions. There are four actions that you can choose from, summon, upgrade, attack, and mine. You get to do up to two actions each turn, and you are allowed to do the same action twice if you want to. The first and most important action is summon. Summon lets you get 1-star beasts from your hand into play. To summon, just pick any 1-star beast from your hand, like this here Dust Bunny, and place it exhausted anywhere in your hideout. At the end of your turn, it'll become unexhausted, ready for the next turn. Another very important action is Upgrade, which will let you power up your beasts. 
To upgrade, just pick one of your unexhausted one or two star beasts, like this Dust Bunny or Invasive Wave Strider here, and replace it with a beast from your hand with one more star. So, I could upgrade this Dust Bunny here with one star for a two star Anabite from my hand, or any other two star beast in my hand, and I could upgrade this two star Invasive Wave Strider for a three star Chromanova from my hand. The new beast is going to come in exhausted and will keep any damage dealt to the previous beast. Upgrading is essential to get any strategy going, as high star ranked beasts have better stats and unique special powers. The next action to learn about is attack. Attack is the number one way to deal damage in grotto beasts. To attack, just exhaust an allied beast in the grotto, like this here Chromanova, and then attack an enemy that is in front of or diagonally next to the beast you exhausted. So this Chromanova could hit any of these three puddle puppies, but not the weenie mutt, it's too far away. If Chromanova was in the corner like this, it could hit either of those two Puddle Puppies, but not either of those two Weenie Mutts. Deal damage to the target beast using the rules I explained earlier. Matching defense will block damage, otherwise the enemy will take all of the damage. A beast is destroyed when it has as much or more damage as it has health. It'll go to its owner's discard pile, and the opponent will receive one crystal for each star on it. So, if my Chromanova here were to attack this Weenie Mutt, it would destroy it, and I would earn two crystals since Weenie Mutt is a two-star beast. On the other hand, if I attacked Puddle Puppy, it would also destroy it, and I would only earn one crystal since Puddle Puppy is a one-star beast. Attacking is the best way to foil your opponent's plans, and it can net you a load of crystals, so be sure to do it often. The last and by far the simplest action is Mine. Just exhaust an allied beast in the grotto, and you'll earn one crystal. Plain and simple. Mine when you've beaten your opponent out of the grotto to score big and pull ahead. Okay, now you know all of the actions. There's one more thing that I haven't said yet aside moves and actions that you can do during your turn, and that is playing a different kind of card entirely, special cards. Special cards give you access to powerful effects that can change the tide of the entire game. There are three kinds of special cards, purple hijinks, gray trinkets, and blue events. You're allowed to play any number of special cards during your turn. Hijinx cards are the simplest kind of special card. Just pick a Hijinx card from your hand, play it into your discard pile, read its effect out loud, deal one damage to a beast, and do it. So I could use this Thistle Missile here to do one damage to my opponent's Dust Bunny. Trinkets are helpful tools that your beasts can use. Each beast can have one trinket equipped, and once it's equipped, it stays attached until the beast is destroyed. Trinkets add their text to the attached beast and can grant everything from stat boosts to unique powers. If I gave my Anabite up here this wooden spoon, it would increase its attack from 2 to 3. And if I gave this Toy Rex here a helpful plant, it would give it some healing when it gets hurt. Events are situational cards that give you access to a short-term effect. To activate an event, just place it face up on your side of the board. You can have one event active at a time. Events last for as long as their listed duration, which you can denote by putting counters on them. At the start of each of your turns, remove one counter from your active event if you have one. While the event is still active, the effect listed on it applies to the board. Once an event is out of counters, it ends and it goes to your discard pile. There's another kind of event called an activates in event, which does nothing until the turn where the last counter on it is removed. At this point, trigger the effect listed on the card, and then move it to your discard pile. Some special cards you'll come across are Ultra, denoted by a red U in the top left corner and under the name of the card. You can only play one Ultra card each turn. Once you're done with your turn, you can end your turn, which lets you do two things. First, you get to unexhaust all of your beasts, and then you'll draw back up until you have six cards in your hand. That's right, you don't draw one card per turn in Grotto Beasts, you draw back to a full hand. You're free to decide what kind of card to draw, beast or special, your choice, with the only limit being that you can't draw more special cards once you're holding four in your hand. Once you're done drawing, your turn is over and it's your opponent's turn to play. If while you're drawing, one of your decks runs out of cards, don't panic. Just wait for the other deck to run out of cards too, then you can flip over both of your discard piles, shuffle them, and keep drawing as normal. Alright, you're almost ready to get fighting in the grotto. Let's just talk about a couple last things and you'll be on your way. First, let's do a quick overview of some common card effects that you'll see around in the game. So let's talk about keywords, which are special rules compacted down to special phrases written in bold. When you see a beast with dash, that means this beast comes into the game unexhausted. 
Normally, beasts enter the game exhausted, so having this keyword lets you get right up into the action. Piercing means this beast ignores its target's defense when attacking. You can use piercing to break down defensive opponents. Ranged is a unique keyword that means this beast can attack opponents from any position in the grotto. So this Meowdy can attack all four Baruts from here, 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 or even here. The last keyword to learn about is Double Strike, which means whenever this beast would attack once, it attacks twice instead. This can massively boost a beast's damage output, so keep an eye out for this powerful keyword. Another kind of common special effect are triggers, which mean when something happens, do something. Triggers can activate even during your opponent's turn, which can let you jump in for an interrupting ability. Summon means after this beast enters the board, do something. Summon effects are good value, letting you get a new beast out and activate a special effect at the same time. Damaged means after this beast is damaged. This can give you a key chance to interrupt your opponent. Destroyed means after this beast is destroyed, letting you rapidly snap back with an effect. Lastly, upgraded means after this beast is upgraded. Upgraded effects are great because they're easy to save for later and reward you for developing your board. And that's it! You now know how to play Grotto Beasts! Congratulations! Summon beasts, upgrade them, move, fight, play specials, and get enough crystals to win! That's all there is to it! Now, before you throw down, you're gonna want to make a deck. A deck in Grotto Beasts, as you know, has two parts, the Beast deck and the Special deck. Together, they have to add up to 45 cards, and there needs to be at least 10 cards in each of them. You can have up to 3 copies of a single card. Aside from that, you can decide how to balance it. 25 beasts and 20 specials, or maybe 12 beasts and 33 specials. It's all your choice. And with that, you now know all about how to start playing. Grotto Beast Community is available entirely free in Tabletop Simulator, with 80 cards featuring dozens of brand new illustrations and hundreds of hours of playtesting. If you would like to play, please come join our Discord where you can be sure there's always a friendly tamer down to face off. So thanks for watching, and best of luck, Grotto Tamer. If you have any questions about the rules, the game, or anything else, feel free to leave a comment and I'll be sure to help you out. I'll see you in the grotto.